Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Gavin Lockyer from Aerofura Resources. Hi, Gavin. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having us again. Thanks for getting up early in the morning to do this with us. Not a problem. Where are you today? Uh, in the office today, but uh, I was on a phone call to uh, New York uh, um, a bit earlier, so uh, I'm middle of the day by now. Are you in Perth? Yes, I'm in Perth, sorry. Aerofura is a rare earth company. Can you tell us which rare earths you're touching? Sure, our focus is on uh, neodymium and praseodymium, two key elements in, in high performance magnets. And uh, as, as most of your uh, listeners and, and viewers would, would know, uh, it's in, in rare supply. So uh, we're looking to be one of the next, uh, next big producers in the world. So numbers 59 and 60 on the periodic table, they're in the same family, correct? Correct, yeah. And do they ever, are they ever found in uh, uh, their natural element in nature, or are they always found with other rare earths? Typically, uh, they're, they're, the rare earth suite all comes together. It's because they all try and sit in sort of box 50, 57 um, on, on the periodic table. So they're all fairly chemically bonded and close. Uh, so where you find one, you typically find more. Um, where, where the interesting thing is with our deposit is that it's actually enriched in MDPR. So, um, you know, we're quite, uh, quite where, blessed in that regards. Where is that deposit, Gavin? It's uh, in, the, in the Northern Territory of Australia, uh, 130 kilometres north of Alice Springs, which is a town of about 26,000 people right in the heart of Australia. Yeah, um, Alice Springs is the equivalent of Kansas in the United States. It's the geographic <laughs> centre. So it, it's, it's a great great place actually to have a deposit you're um, just uh, remote enough in terms of um, being away from population so any of your activities aren't going to adversely impact uh, other um, other communities but you know we have a Alice Springs is serviced uh, daily to every capital city via um, flights um, we've got you know great infrastructure all around us so it's, it's quite um, quite lucky you have roads power water yep all of that um, some of it Actually, going straight through the deposit or through the uh, through our tenements, so very very lucky indeed. Now, I, I read that you have um, somewhere between twelve and fifteen million Australian dollars in treasury. What will be the focus of your spending over the next while? That uh, that money will be utilised uh, in our final uh, piloting. Uh, this this piloting is not so much about proving up the chemistry and the metallurgy. It's more around materials handling and uh, and equipment selection. So uh, we're we're trying to de-risk the process for when we go into commissioning, and um, we're we're spending a, a bit of time with a lot of engineering groups. Um, and one of them in particular, Canadian group SNC Lavalin, and um, you know they're overseeing the work that we're doing that will ultimately feed into detailed design and bankable feasibility next year. You have signed an MOU with a Korean company, I believe. Can you tell us a little bit about the MOU and why it's been signed? Sure. Uh, OCI is a major chemical producer in, in Korea, and they have um, chemical plants throughout the world. And the final stage of our processing is a solvent extraction process, which needs a, a bit of hydrochloric acid. And uh, hydrochloric acid is quite expensive to transport around because it's predominantly water. So it makes more sense to, for us to take a small quantity of, um, of rare earth uh, consolidated product up to uh, next, next door to an existing chemical facility. And uh, they, they have those, as I said, globally. And we're working with OCI about finding the, the best location in order to co-locate that separation plant. And they've also expressed a desire to, to be involved with that um, in a joint venture process of, of, of toll treating our, our material through that plant. So, so they're, not, they're, that, they're not going to be an end user, that's about a toll treating program. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Who, who toll treating be, our material and possibly others. Who would be your end users? Uh, magnet producers, basically. So, you know, we'll be, we're, we're currently talking with um, magnet producers in Japan, uh, in China, uh, Less so in Korea, uh, but uh, we'll also next year start ramping up our um, involvement with uh, the magnet producers in Germany. Well, this might be a record. We've been talking for about five minutes about rare earths, and the word China hasn't come up yet. 
Yes, it's interesting. I mean, everybody would be fully aware that uh, China controls the market. And, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of commentary lately that China is actually going to be a net importer of NDPR in particular for its own uh, manufacturing purposes. Uh, they've got very ambitious targets for electric vehicles, which require a lot of this material. How much per car? Uh, it's about 1.7 kilograms for an electric car, but uh, a normal car will use about 700 grams of uh, NDPR magnets in the uh, electronics, so steering, brakes, uh, windows, seats, etc. So every electric vehicle needs about twice as much NDPR yep. as it does in a combustion engine. Yeah, a that's combustion correct. Combustion vehicle. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, similar yeah, the ex extra kilo basically sits in the traction motor, which oh. um, you know many of your um, of your subscribers would be familiar with the lithium battery technology that's advanced greatly. Um, and we think that you know things like cobalt, copper, and NDPR will be the uh, have been the unforgotten uh, technology metals of the past, and we're looking to change that for the next twelve months in particular. You mentioned some commentary around China. When might that imbalance begin to happen where China becomes a net importer? Well, I think we're seeing it happening now. Um, they're, they're making big inroads in cleaning up their environmental legacies by closing down uh, a number of mines and processes. But we're also starting to see uh, Chinese organisations put their foot on uh, on projects outside of China. We've seen it. Uh, the you know the largest mine outside of China previously was Molycorp and. Mm -hmm. And those assets have just recently gone into Chinese hands. Uh, what's the next significant milestone we should look for? Our, uh, our piloting is progressing really well. Uh, I think our, our next milestone internally is to uh, successfully complete that. And uh, it might not be a, you know, a really sexy thing for the market to, to absorb, but for us it will be um, a really big achievement towards finalising our feasibility study um, on top of that, I think an off-take arrangement sometime next year would be great. Um, but we're, we're also targeting getting our environmental approval by the end of this year. Great. Can we check in with you in three, four months and see how you're doing? That would be great. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time today. No problem. Thanks for having us.